Hi everybody, so tonight what we're going to talk about, we're going to be discussing the way in which types of spiritual experience can be used in order to make a kind of proof of Christianity. And our bird Enzo is chiming in in the background. So if you hear him from time to time, he may have something to say as well. All right, so in other videos, we've spoken about various human faculties, and I'm going to make um, some different circles here that are going to represent different human faculties. I'm going to just start here and say awareness, slash senses, imagination, the intellect, the will, the heart, what I would call spirit. This is a basic diagram that shows us the kinds of um, faculties and levels of functioning that exist within the human person. And so this diagram is very helpful. And in other uh, videos, we've discussed how this can be used to organize uh, different psychotherapies, different spiritualities, so on and so forth, different religions can be mapped onto this uh, use of the human faculties and how they use human faculties. And in those other videos, we established the way in which the faculty which transcends and includes the operation of a lower faculty is higher and therefore has a deeper appreciation of the truth than that lower faculty. So for example, my awareness and the senses are not as advanced as my imagination, which you know depends on and kind of extrapolates from what I have sensed in my life. So if I imagine, you know, let's say I, here's a little, uh, I can stare at these little pictures of places in Jerusalem. This is a, um, a little bookmark that I think my, my grandmother and great aunt got when they went to Jerusalem. So I could stare at these images. I could look at, um, here's one of the places, the Church of All Nations. Or so I could look at that image. And then I could imagine myself standing on the porch of that place. So, you know, I could look at that picture and I could put myself in it. So the imagination is higher than just merely the senses. In the same way, I could think about where these places are. You know, where is the Wailing Wall? Where is, where are these places? You know, I could kind of think about it and gain more knowledge about this thing than just by staring at the colors on the page. You know, there's more information from thinking. Um, and, you know, of course, I could take action, you know, willing to learn more. And then, you know, let's say I use my heart, you know, my capacity to relate. I, uh, let's say, um, let's say this is a, uh, a longer time ago and my great aunt, my grandmother were alive. I could have a conversation with them and that would be superior to merely doing research about the city of Jerusalem. I could have a conversation with them and that would be a relational experience that would be more, uh, get me more information, more reality about the situation. And, you know, let me say that, that you know, I think about, um, you know, all the different peoples that he has pictures of, you know, the Dome of the Rock, the Wailing Wall, the Church of All Nations. And I could say, okay, let me pray for the city of Jerusalem. You know, let me pray for the people who are there. There's all different conflicts there. You know, I could pray for them and I could gain uh, even further um understanding and knowledge about the situation in Jerusalem. So I hope that's, that's pretty um, clear that, you know, that, that the, the operations of a lower mental faculty are transcended and included by a higher faculty or, or operation. So this is also a way of arranging different religions. And so we saw this in our previous videos, but just to recap, we could talk about this, you know, certain things like the Eastern religions, like, like Buddhism, I'm just going to be... An H and a D, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism. Um, the imagination, nobody really only uses that exclusively. Um, but the intellect, we put things like stoicism and the cognitive therapies. I'm going to put some cognitive therapies here. Like mindfulness therapies would go down here with the, um, you know, the uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism. The cognitive therapies could go with the stoics. We could put be the behavioral therapies over here with the will. And I could even guess, I've, this is a new idea, but I'll stick this the Confucians over here, you know, with the will, because they're about a certain type of social actions. Um, over here, we could put um, Islam, modern Judaism, and the 12 step movement. And the spirit will put, we'll just broadly put Christianity. 
up there for spirit. And so we kind of came to this basic understanding of the way in which the different religious traditions use the faculties of the mind and show their levels of functionality and how they align with those things. And that was how we did, what we did in some previous videos. So now that we've established that, we're going to make a different argument today. We're going to call this the argument from kingdoms or the argument from dimensions. Anyone who is familiar with the work of Eckhart Tolle is very familiar with the word domain of being or you know, the now, you know, being in the now. That's down here. That's the domain of being. That's the type of spiritual experience we can have. We're in the here and the now. We let go of past and future. We kind of experience the present moment. That is what we are aiming for in these Eastern religions, the experience of the now and the famous um, kind of spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle uses the term domain of being. which That's exactly what this is. Now, the Stoics they used to use the word the logos, which was essentially like the rational dimension of all things, the order behind all things, the nature of all things. And when we are in harmony with that order, with that rational order of things, then we're not disturbed. So the Stoics would talk about things like that there is a kind of, um, you know, that there's a kind of a rational order. Um, you know, there's this kind of sense of, you know, if I understand that a human is mortal, then I won't be disturbed when my friend dies. If I realize that things don't tend to go my way, I won't be disturbed about that. There's a way things are. There's just a way of things. And this way of things is what I should be in harmony with, the nature of reality, this rational dimension, this order of reality, this logos. This, that's what the Stoics are talking about. And so there's a dimension of rationality. We start with the, this level here at the bottom. We have domain of being. This next level up, we have dimension of rationale. We don't really need to stick anything at imagination because nobody sits around entirely in the imagination. There's no religious tradition that's like that. But you could have somebody, okay, let's say some tradition is really about visualization. You know, we have there are some groups that are like that, you know, like going into imaginative states. You know, there are guided visualizations. There are views that visualization actually produces outside results. Some of those traditions could probably fit over there, but they're not mainstream religions. They're more of like um, things like law of attraction, things like that, uh, that really emphasize this. And maybe some people who are into some kinds of like magic and stuff will really like those visualizations, but it's not a mainstream spirituality, primarily in the imagination. Um, so... Then we could go up to the 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 Confucians, maybe at the at, at the um, you know, at this level over here. Maybe there's like they, they have an idea. Okay, there's um, you know, they 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 talk about different ideas like you know the the mandate of, you know, there's different ideas of like I believe if I get it correctly, um, there's idea. I haven't studied Confucianism. This is the newest part of this chart, so please pardon any inaccuracies in the description of the tradition. Um, concepts that come back to me from just thinking about it off the top of my head are ideas like mandate of heaven. Um, and these concepts of that the emperor must fulfill these kind of, you know, as long as he fulfills social order, that he has the right to rule and these type of things. Um, and so there's definitely a sense that there are social obligations. I mean, definitely in the Confucian tradition, we have things like filial piety, um, all these type of things of like, you know, um, obligations to one's ancestors. There's these laws, these social norms um, that one must fulfill. And so when we fulfill these kind of um, intrinsic social dynamics, then everything goes well in the universe and we have harmony. So we could kind of see that as kind of this kind of behavioral religion. You know, we can kind of see it that way. Then we have something like Islam, Judaism, and the 12 steps. This is kind of this idea of a higher power. We definitely see this developed in the 12 steps, like a higher power and a moral standard. This um, emphasis, you know, the 12 steps, I think that they, they, this higher power is not necessarily defined as one higher power, and the moral standards one has in the 12 steps are not necessarily fully defined, but one is supposed to follow a moral code, make reparation for failing at the moral code, and ask for the help of a higher power and the support group in order to achieve this. So this is definitely a thing of using the heart, this relational ability. Um, you know, over here, we, we began, obviously, at the bottom. We, we had the domain of being. Then we had the dimension of rationality. Then we could say that there is like a some kind of dyna a social dynamic, um, a behavioral dynamic that needs to be there. 
and then we could have this sense of kind of a, um, you know, especially the 12 steps, we could have a fellowship of recovery, um, a, um, you know, this type of, this kind of group of people that we need to be part of, this kind of um, recovery fellowship is a big part, and this could include the higher power as well. Um, we also have, obviously, in this uh, conception, we could also say this as almost, like, especially Islam. Islam is about submission. We would call this like the, 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 the dominance of God, the dominance of God. You know, because God, we submit to God. Uh, but there's a very deep complexity here, because like in, in, in the Islamic thought, and I know that this is a very simple introduction, there's things where it's like there's this very deep understanding of like a free will combined with a very, very high view of, of sovereignty of God. So there's some paradoxes, you know, a little bit of paradox there. There are Muslim people who could speak to that, I'm sure. But there is definitely that kind of idea, as far as I understand it, is there. But there's a sense very much that we have this, this, this dominance of God, you know, this kind of sense. So we've moved from the domain of being, the dimension of rationality, the dynamics of society, the fellowship of recovery and the dominance of God, these things, you know, and we have to understand again that each one of these understandings of reality transcends and includes those that are below it. Uh, so, for example, the fact that the, um, the Stoic understanding, you know, transcends and includes, you know, being, you know, being in the moment. You know, the Stoic has to be um, the uh, the idea of sati, mindfulness, in the um, Buddhist tradition, is transcended and included in prosohi, the um, kind of vigilance in the stoic tradition and we'll have a whole episode on those concepts as well um you know but there is this this the way that we get into these kingdoms is also you know is also kind of transcended and included in this nesting um nesting thing so it's very much um you know we we have um more a deeper understanding of reality in the kind of kingdom that is proposed to us. And this also happens very much so in the Christian conception, which so we've gone from dom um, dimension, no, domain of being, dimension of rationality, social dynamic of society, um, dominance of God, and then the kingdom of heaven. Um, and this kind of um, this kind of uh, understanding is the most the, the deepest thing we could possibly imagine here, because the kingdom of heaven involves everything. Because the kingdom of heaven involves a participation in not only the present moment, but past and future. When one is in the kingdom of heaven, um, there is a sense of now and not yet, then and it's also now. There's this sense in which when we are involved in prayer, we are united in the prayer of Christ, even. And that is connected to, you know, obviously his eternal nature, the fact that he was in, that he was on earth and crucified, and the fact that he will come again. It's all these realities are, are bound up with each other, and we are, we become, in Christian spiritual experience, united not only to the now, but to that which is eternal and that which is past and future. So it's almost like at the very beginning and basic level of spiritual experience, at down over here, the domain of being chops out the past and the future and puts you in the now, whereas the Christian understanding all the way at the top of this chart, going all through these levels, allows you to then again enca encapsulate the past and the future, but not merely the personal past and future, but the, the, the history and the story of God and God's people. And your experience has become part of this gigantic narrative whole. And this past and future and all these polarities come into through, through word and sacrament and all these different things. There's this gigantic complexity to the spiritual experience that is enabled in the Christian tradition, especially in its ancient and apostolic forms. There's this, there's this deepest possible richness to the um, to the kingdom of heaven, which transcends and includes all these levels, the kingdom of heaven transcends and includes being in now and now because you have to you know in a way withdraw from the world. Uh, even Jesus will say you know when you pray shut the door, you know and that's you know 
to withdraw from the world, which is, you know, come into the now in a way, but then, you know, enter your inner room, pray to your father who's in secret. It's finding this much deeper dimension. Pray to your father who's in secret. You might not be able to see him just by this, you know, by experience of the domain of being, but you want to talk to him, and all of a sudden you realize that you are in touch with the vast expanse of, of the biblical narrative and all these other things through all the different types of Christian spiritual experiences you can have. You become a participant uh, in the eternal and in the past and the future. So this is a much more powerful, dynamic, and inclusive reality spiritually than, the, than these other forms. So again, the kingdom of heaven transcends and includes the domain of being, transcends and includes the dimension of rationality, transcends and includes social dynamics, transcends and includes the dominance of God. You know, we have this, this way in which the spiritual experience of, of, of the Christian tradition is most rich, is most uh, enriching. And so this is a way of talking about this. Now, what we're going to do here is we're also going to, you know, begin um, a little bit of a, um, I might, I might, I think what I'll do is I'm going to pause the video and I'll go into another uh, video where we'll talk about, you know, some different ways that we can talk about this, especially with different um, different Christian understanding. We can talk about other spiritual understandings. There's going to be other videos that are going to talk about even the practices that bring us to these different things. So I'm going to clean off the board, and we're going to get we're going to make some other videos that will talk a little bit more deeply about some of these other processes. But I hope this is helpful in looking at this kind of argument for why Christian experience is the most rich type of spiritual experience you could have, and this kind of completes our. Um, there's at least this, 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 this part of what we might call the argument from kingdoms, the argument from domains and dimensions of spiritual experience that argues for the richness of Christianity. And ultimately, I believe, when we, if we develop this argument further, we will see that it also points to the richness and fullness of Catholicism. So thank you for listening to this video, and we're going to produce some other ones that are going to develop this in other ways.